New York in 23, San Francisco and Los Angeles in 20, and Sydney in 19. Each city has had its worst day of wildfire smoke in recorded history in the last four years. It's clear that the threat of wildfire smoke is becoming more widespread and intense. So what can you do to protect yourself? Before we delve into the solutions, let's understand why you should be concerned about wildfire smoke. The haze you are seeing is primarily composed of tiny particles known as PM2.5. PM stands for particulate matter, and 2.5 refers to the particle size, which is 2.5 microns. Because these particles are so small, they can be inhaled deeply and absorbed into the respiratory tract, where they can cross the alveoli and enter also the bloodstream. These particles have a significant impact on your health, particularly your lungs, which are the most vulnerable organs to them. And because they can enter the bloodstream, they also cause inflammation throughout the body, which can result in heart attacks, blood clotting, strokes, and peripheral blood clots. Individuals with pre-existing lung diseases, such as asthma, COPD, and cancers, are especially vulnerable to wildfire smoke's effects. The particles and gases in smoke can irritate and worsen the condition of the lungs. When exposed to wildfire smoke, the young children and the elderly with underdeveloped or weakened respiratory and immune systems are more vulnerable to respiratory issues. Long-term and repeated exposure to wildfire smoke puts pregnant women and their fetuses at risk. And for those who believe that they are immortal because they are in good health right now, chronic exposure to inadequate air quality may cause continual injury to the cardiac tissue and so increase the risk of cardiovascular disease in apparently healthy individuals. If you are interested in the link between air pollution and cardiovascular risks, you should definitely read this paper. You are lucky not to be experiencing massive shortages of energy, food, gas, or chronic medications as people in Lebanon. So, protecting your health from wildfire smoke is not difficult. Let's take a look at some real-world solutions to deal with wildfire smoke. During wildfire smoke outbreaks, it's critical to prioritize your health by staying indoors and avoiding inhaling the smoke. Consider leaving the affected area if possible to reduce your exposure. If you can't leave, then keep your windows closed when staying inside to reduce the amount of smoke entering your home. Set your HVAC system to recirculate mode or close the outdoor intake damper if it has a fresh air intake. You should consider using EPA air filters in your HVAC system or you could use a NEPA air purifier itself to improve your indoor air quality. These EPA filters remove smoke particles effectively and contribute to cleaner air. For example, I use this Xiaomi air purifier. As is often the case with Xiaomi, I found it to have by far the best quality price ratio. There are also numerous videos on YouTube of Chinese people using the Xiaomi in their homes to purify the indoor air from city smog. What I also like about these models is that they include a particle counter and display the particle count in real time as shown here. Right now I'm close to zero. I don't live in a high-rise building in New York, but at least my air is not toxic. The added bonus of EPA filters is that they also filter viruses. If purchasing an air purifier is out of question because it's too expensive for you, you can make an air filter out of four furnace filters and a box fan. This video shows how to build a do-it-yourself air purifier. You can also seal any leaks around windows and doors with tape to prevent smoke from entering your home. This contributes to the formation of a barrier against smoke infiltration. But be careful not to overdo it. Install a carbon monoxide detector as excessive sealing increases the risk of carbon monoxide buildup. Now you will most likely not spend 100% of your time indoors for several days because you have to go outside for a variety of reasons. If you must be outside in such conditions, there are few precautions you can take to keep yourself safe. To begin, it's critical to limit your time spent outside and to avoid outdoor physical activity as increased breathings lead to a higher intake of particles. So instead of riding your bike, take the bus. And if you really need to be outside for an extended period of time, you're in luck because you just finished years of training with a very powerful tool, masks. But 
But, 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 unfortunately, your training was most likely provided by your public affairs agency, which is now more akin to eugenist organizations. Surgical and cloth masks are almost completely ineffective against airborne risks such as smoke and most respiratory viruses. So you take your surgical and cloth masks and either throw them away or give them to people you dislike. Like your mother-in-law. Masks are ineffective because 2.5 micron particles, like many respiratory viruses, are airborne and will not be stopped by a cloth mask or baggy blues. It's just basic physics. If it's baggy, air will circulate around it. Hopefully, there are masks known as respirators that are especially effective against 2.5 microns particulates and are supposed to fit you much better than baggy blues. These masks are actually respirators and can be as simple as a N95 mask. Also, don't go for retard. Never go for retard. These respirators do not function solely as sieves. It's not as simple as filtering your pasta from water. It's far more complex, and electrostatic forces are the primary reason they function. And at the end of the day, it works because it's physics. And if a respirator fails, it's like the old joke about boomers and computers that the problem is between the chair and the monitor. Well, the problem with respirators is between your lung and the respirator. It makes no sense to call for some randomized controlled trial of such mechanistic intervention. And if you are an anti-masker, I salute you for carrying out Santa Claus depopulation wish through your own natural selection. But here are some things that your health authorities have known for a long time but are reluctant to say. There is no single respirator that will fit everyone. Because we all have unique facial structures and features. You're going to have more trouble than normal people if you have the Empire State Building as your nose. The best I have seen is the 3M Aura, and it fits about 90% of the population. It's a frequently a total miss, for example, for people with a small frame or shin. This is why your respirators must be fit tested. Normally, you would do it with a hood and a vaporized bitter solution around you. If you can taste the bitterness despite wearing the mask, it means that the mask doesn't fit your face well and there are some leaks somewhere, usually around your nose or chin. Fortunately for you, normal air in New York is being transformed into fit testing air. So grab your respirator and see if you can taste, smell or get irritated from your air with your mask. If you can, it means the fit test failed. And if you are interested in doing a low cost fit test, watch this video. My favorite mask is this one. I will put the link in the description. It's perfect for my Lebanese skin. <laughs> Another important point is that a near looped N95 will fail if it tests for a very high percentage of the population. A N95 ear loop is ineffective and should not be sold unless you pass if it tests with it, otherwise a headband one is required. Remember that limiting your exposure to wildfire smoke is the best way to avoid the health risk associated with it. To make informed decision, keep up to date on local air quality conditions. The most useful website is airnow.gov. Meanwhile, I would avoid risky activities because the ER is more crowded than usual with people suffering from breathing problems. Also, drink plenty of water to keep your respiratory system moist and to relieve irritation caused by smoke exposure. Fortunately, these wildfires are currently occurring with a functioning grid. But to be honest, you should have a plan in place in case the power goes out while the smoke is present. In this case, I would do whatever it takes to get out of the zone, which is why I have a bug out bag even if it's an overshoot. However, I have some large batteries that will keep the air purifier running for a long time. The core of this channel is hoping for the best but preparing for the worst, and it's more broadly a channel on collapse. If you got this far in the video and liked it, could I please ask you to simply like and leave a comment for the algorithm? You might also be interested in some of my other content on the collapse of my country, gold and preparedness, which I share without filter, such as in this video. Now I've read some people discussing methods that don't require electricity. I'm not sure how effective they are, but they appear to come from some of these crazy groups of people treating cancer with lemon juice. So, for example, here is what they propose. You could capture smoke particles by placing wet towels in front of your windows. 
You could boil certain herbs like cedar, sage or rosemary to freshen the air. Opening baking soda boxes and spreading them to absorb odors and contaminants from the air might help. And if you have plants in the size of a jungle, it might also help a bit. Finally, white fires can emit volatile chemicals such as polycyclic carbons, which can pose additional risks in addition to regular pollution. These compounds and chemicals found in wildfire smoke may be more dangerous. I'm not sure if that's the case right now with the Canadian wildfires, but you know, as we have recently seen with the chemical fires in Ohio, public health officials were more than happy to abandon its cannon fodder. Uh, sorry, I mean citizens. It's a whole different ballgame when it comes to dealing with chemical air pollution. You will need to look into air purifiers with chemical filtering filters. I know they exist because Xiaomi has filters that filter formaldehyde, benzene and ammonia as well as filters that use activated carbons. For masks, you will also have to go into filters made for chemical filtering like some of the 3M cartridges. Now I have no illusion that despite the fact that all of this information is easily accessible anywhere on the internet, people will go about their lives as if nothing has happened. Life could collapse around them and they would continue as if nothing had happened, all for one reason that I described in this video. If you have any question, don't hesitate to leave a comment. You can support me on Patreon or buy me a coffee and we stay in touch on Twitter and Instagram. Special thanks to my Patreon and YouTube Super Tankers. You are the MVPs that help me continue to do these free videos.